fur farms in the Castoria and Kozani regions of Greece purposefully released around 50,000 American minks in 2010. Persuaded that they were acting morally, animal rights activists carried out the procedure. There is no greater act of kindness than rescuing helpless animals, is there? One small detail was overlooked, though. Consequences. Rapid recapture or discovery of dead minks occurred in the majority of cases. However, about 15,000 were able to adapt to their new environment and quickly spread. After that, what transpired? Guessing doesn't require a doctorate. And while you're at it, hit that like button to make sure you remember it later. The minks didn't merely make it, they flourished. They multiplied at an alarming rate, even in regions where native species were already struggling for survival. Another mass release, according to environmentalists, could wipe out species in the area. Naturally, campaigners set free an additional 10,000 minks a year after that. Since when has it ever been a good idea to double down on a wrong idea? In case you were wondering how American minks got to Greece, the story goes like this. When it comes to fur production in Europe, Greece is a big player. The 1920s saw the initial importation of minks from North America. Invaders like these are no longer limited to Greece. They have spread worldwide. Countless countries, the Baltics, France, Germany, Iceland, Ireland, Spain, are considered. Nobody even asked them to come. Mass releases like these intensified the problem, even though minks occasionally escaped independently. People in Kozani were already claiming invasion status by the year 2021. You couldn't even open a window without the possibility of a furry intruder, minks prowling balconies, apartments, and hospital grounds. The problem extends beyond the mere inconvenience. These tiny creatures are extremely efficient eaters. Anything goes on the dinner table. Quail eggs, amphibians, reptiles, chickens, you name it. Important domestic and wild animal populations are also at risk from diseases they carry, such as plasmacytosis. Ecosystems are, of course, hit very hard. Local species are pushed out of their habitats, ground-nesting bird populations plummet, and food chains become unbalanced. How are we going to clean this up? For quite some time, there was nothing at all. There was a general outcry from scientists who published reports and issued warnings, but that was about it. Trapping minks along rocky riverbanks and overgrown banks close to farms is one of the real solutions that Greece has recently begun to consider. Currently, there has been no mass action, only plans. The uncontrollable invasion of American minks will likely be in the news in a few years. And if you think getting rid of them is easy, consider that even the United Kingdom has admitted, after decades of trying, that complete eradication is impossible. However, a more gentle approach, such as wildlife contraception, may be considered by Greece when they do get serious. Wild animals, such as boars and perhaps minks, can now be dosed with chemicals that inhibit reproduction, replacing the use of guns and traps. The least you can do if you can't defeat them is prevent them from procreating. The most recent strategy for managing invasive species, subtly incorporating a method of contraception into their diet. No, I mean it. To prevent any unintentional No Kids Club membership, researchers are creating specialized feeders that are compatible only with boars. They are currently conducting comparable trials in the United Kingdom with invasive gray squirrels, using selective feeders that contain a mixture of peanut butter and a fertility-blocking chemical. The final product? It takes no one pulling a trigger for both sexes to become infertile. Truthfully, those who fight for the rights of animals should be ecstatic. Now, releasing animals into the wild at random isn't always the best way to protect them. Consider the goat fiasco that occurred on Australia's Middle Percy Island. It seemed like a good idea in 1874 
when a ship's commander left 12 goats for stranded sailors to eat. A hundred years later, in 2011, Middle Percy was officially designated as a national park. In an effort to prevent the goat's extinction as a feral pest, their ardent supporters fought for the goat's official recognition as a rare breed native to Australia. Warning, it produced the desired result. But there will be repercussions. There are more than 5.8 million feral goats in New South Wales alone, and they're making their way to every state, even the islands in the Great Barrier Reef. Goats like these cause mayhem by displacing native animals and posing a threat to 128 species of endangered plants and animals. And that's the result of having well-intentioned people meet without any preparation. Any prepar Great Keppel Island's feral goat population has formally transitioned from cute nuisance to full-blown ecological disaster. Interested in comparing the two? Lomi, verdant, flourishing. This is a place devoid of goats. Following their relocation, this is the identical spot. Yep, no need for a caption. Goats are being likened to cockroaches by some ecologists, but unlike those pests, these goats aren't hiding under your sink just yet. It became apparent that Australia was facing a serious issue by November 2023. More sophisticated baits, thermal camera-equipped drones, and aerial culling missions were the new tactics unveiled by the government. It's almost science fiction, but it's actually just Australia attempting to deal with the aftermath of ignoring feral goats earlier. You see, in the early 2000s and 10s, advocates battled valiantly to preserve these goats, envisioning joyful herds freely roaming the earth. In the present day, goats continue to dismantle nesting grounds for birds, trample delicate ecosystems like the Blue Mountains, spread diseases, and extort hundreds of thousands of dollars from farmers and communities annually. Goats multiply at a rate that outpaces government funding for eradication efforts, leading to a never-ending loop of starting a cull, running out of money, and goats bouncing back. Truthfully, the fight against invasive species is something that Australia truly does not shirk from. With a success rate of around 88% using trapping, hunting and poisoning, they have carried out more than 1,500 goat removal operations on islands alone. Whereas Australia proper? That is an entirely different creature. And the harm to the environment is only one aspect. Additionally, car accidents can occur when goats wander onto roads. Even South Australian towns were not spared in 2018 when goats invaded, destroying parks, vineyards, and any greenery they could get their mouth resulting in hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Every time I hear that activists are planning to rescue animals, my skepticism grows. In 2019, for instance, activists in New Jersey were so intent on freeing the fish and rays that they staged a protest before the aquarium's opening. The issue is that many species are housed in aquariums. The release of those animals could unintentionally cause devastating ecological catastrophes. For example, freshwater stingrays have invaded Brazil and are causing havoc with fishing gear, injuries, and the country's economy. Already, South American stingrays are pushing their way into Indonesian waterways, displacing native species. The problem has spread to Singapore as well, where stingrays that were once pets are now eating the native fish. And America? They are fed up. Although invasive stingrays are currently illegal, the day an exotic pet gets too used to life in nature, it's game over. Let us not overlook snakeheads when we discuss aquatic nightmares. Paranoia across the country, and three horror films, ensued after these eerie freshwater fish with air bladders first appeared in Maryland in 2002. The way they devour their prey, though, is the true source of fear. Snakeheads eat just about anything you can think of. Insects, amphibians, fish, and more. They multiply at an exponential rate, and worse, there are no predators of their kind in North America. 
In just two years, a single female can lay as many as 150,000 eggs, and the parents fiercely protect their young, increasing the likelihood that the following generation will cause even more mayhem. Keep watching, because I have a feeling the next animal rescue tale will be even more bizarre. Return to the floor. Just when you thought goats were bad, horses are even worse. In the same year, the Kosciusko Feral Horse Heritage Act was passed by the state of New South Wales, effectively giving priority to invasive feral horses over endangered native species within a national park. Let me tell you something. Horses are absolutely delightful, stunning, majestic horses. Something may have gone wrong, though, when a national park was designated to protect endangered species, but is now being used to protect an invasive species that is destroying the landscape. Yes, it unfolded in the manner one would anticipate. The number of wild horses multiplied due to this statute. Spoiler alert, activists' proposals for herd management, including passive trapping and relocation, were unsuccessful. If you're asking how on earth horses could cause harm, the answer is simple. They trample delicate subalpine and alpine ecosystems, killing off native plants and frogs and destroying homes for endangered birds and frogs. Birds and... The Australian Alps are home to Kosciusko National Park, which is more than just a random wooded area. The park is also a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve and an official site of Australia's national heritage. Beautiful, irreplaceable, and in grave danger due to decisions meant to protect the right species that end up harming the wrong ones. The evidence is all over Kosciusko National Park in Australia, proving that it was not designed for horses. They destroy habitats for endangered species, such as the stocky Galaxias fish and the northern Corroboree frog, by trampling native vegetation and ripping up streams. It wasn't intentional, but does that change anything? Rutted trails, chewed up grasslands, and enormous pits where once pristine habitats stood are depicted in these photos. As an interesting aside, horses are technically not allowed in national parks, so that's not what you'd expect to see there. It bears repeating that horses are not indigenous to Australia. This classic case of an invasive species is their ancestry, which includes domestic animals that escaped when settlers arrived. But being non-native isn't the only thing at play here. Because of the havoc they wreak, six species of endangered animals and two species of plants are in danger of going extinct, and the horses won't be sleeping well over it. The good news is that a court rejected yet another pro-horse legal effort in June 2024. What does it mean to translate? They authorized hunting in the national park, which was a huge relief for ecologists worldwide. It seemed like forever that the dispute would not end. Estimates put the number of wild horses in the park between 12,700, 97, and 22,760 in October 2023. There sure are a lot of hooves causing havoc. By June of 2027, the National Parks and Wildlife Service aim to bring the horse population down to around 3,000. Despite efforts by environmentalists to block it, the court ultimately sided with common sense. The horse population exploded, adding insult to injury due to years of postponement and discussion. Now, more forceful measures are needed to resolve the issue than was originally anticipated. The present strategy? Keep 3,000 horses on 32% of the park's land and cull the rest by flying over them. Yes, I am aware that it sounds severe. However, Multiple independent reviews have confirmed that professional aerial shooters adhere to stringent standards to guarantee that these operations are conducted safely and with utmost compassion. Not only is it unsightly, but it is also highly contentious. However, at this time, there is no other practical option for safeguarding the national park and its endangered flora and fauna. This isn't a feel-good story 
but standing up for the environment sometimes requires difficult decisions. Regarding being a good person, you should like this. Have a great day.